It is possible to infringe copyright indirectly. Indirect infringement generally has to do with dealing with unauthorized reproductions of copyright materials. Indirect infringement includes importing for the purposes of trade unlicensed copies of works or other subject matter. It also includes selling or hiring infringing articles and entering into unlicensed commercial rental arrangements. I'm going to work backwards through each of these, starting with commercial rental arrangements. When we learnt about the exclusive rights of a copyright owner, we learnt that sound recordings and literary, dramatic or musical works contained in a sound recording and computer programs have rights that give the copyright owner the exclusive right to enter into commercial rental arrangements with respect to these objects. It is therefore an infringement to enter into such an arrangement if you are not the copyright owner or if you don't have the copyright owner's permission. There is no such right in films, which is why we have, or at least used to have, video and DVD rental stores, but we never had the same for sound recordings. Exercising the exclusive right to enter into a commercial rental arrangement is an indirect infringement rather than a direct infringement because it involves dealing with unlicensed copies rather than making unlicensed copies. Remember that the rental arrangement is only infringing if it's commercial. The next type of indirect infringement is sale or hire of an infringing article. Sections 38 and 103 of the Copyright Act provide that copyright is infringed by a person who sells or hires an article if that person knew or ought reasonably to have known that the making of the article constituted an infringement. In other words, if you know that the item you hold is infringing, such as a quote-unquote pirated DVD, it will also be an infringement to sell or hire out that item. Where the article has been imported from overseas, the person will infringe copyright by selling or hiring the article if they knew or ought reasonably to have known that the article would be infringing if it had been made in Australia. The relevant case authority here is Rabin Footwear and Polygram Records. In that case, Rabin imported 1,000 copies of a share CD from Germany. Rabin argued that he did not know that the CDs were infringing. He had asked the supplier about licensing for the CDs and had received a guarded reply. The court held that Rabin had infringed copyright because he ought reasonably to have known that the copies would have been infringing if made in Australia. The supplier's guarded response should have tipped him off. The last means by which copyright can be infringed indirectly is by the importation of infringing articles. The relevant provisions are sections 37 and 102 of the Copyright Act and they are very similar to the provisions applying to the sale or hire of infringing articles. Sections 37 and 102 provide that it is an infringement to import an article into Australia for sale, hire or other commercial purpose without the license of the copyright owner if the importer knew or ought reasonably to have known that if the article had been made by the importer in Australia it would have infringed copyright. The Rabin Footwear and Polygram Records case also considered the importation provisions of the Copyright Act. Another example is Milpururu and Indofern, where a company imported rugs from Vietnam which had the applicant's Aboriginal paintings printed onto them. The court held that the managing directors of the importing company either knew or should have known that if made in Australia by the importer, the rugs would have infringed copyright. The restrictions on importation have allowed copyright owners and exclusive licensees to control the flow of copyright articles into Australia even where these articles have been acquired quite lawfully overseas. Courts have read the words without the license of the copyright owner in sections 37 and 102 to relate to a license to import the goods. 
Thus, if the importer does not have permission to import, they may be restrained by these provisions even if the copies acquired overseas were not pirated copies. The leading case for importation is Interstate Parcel Express and Time Life International, a 1977 decision of the High Court. In that case, Angus and Robinson booksellers had purchased cookbooks from a wholesaler in California and imported them into Australia to sell for $8.95. Time Life International had the exclusive license from the American publisher to publish the cookbooks throughout the world other than in North America. They sold the books in Australia for $16.95. They argued that Angus and Robertson's importation of the books into Australia infringed their copyright. Angus and Robertson argued that they had not infringed copyright because they had legally purchased the books in the United States and therefore had an implied license to resell them. The court found against Angus and Robertson, holding that they had infringed copyright by importation. Since that case, however, restrictions on the importation of books, sound recordings and accessories to imported goods have been relaxed by amendments to the Copyright Act. Sections 44A and 112A apply to books that were first published in a country other than Australia and not published in Australia within 30 days after that. The books must have been legitimately manufactured in their country of origin and so be non-infringing. Books that satisfy this criteria may be imported where an order is placed with the copyright owner or his or her licensee and the owner or licensee is unable to fill the order within 90 days. Or a single copy is imported to fill an order from a person who will use the copy for non-commercial purposes or where copies are imported to fill an order from a non-profit library. In addition to books, sections 44D and 112D now permit the importation of non-infringing sound recordings. Section 44E provides that a computer program that has been published in Australia or in a country that is a member of the Berne Convention or TRIPS Agreement is not infringed where a person imports into Australia an article that has embodied in it a non-infringing copy of the computer program. Section 44F provides the same for electronic literary or musical items. These are defined to include a book in electronic form or sheet music in electronic form. Sections 44C and 112C provide that the importation or subsequent sale of a non-infringing accessory to an article does not constitute an infringement of any copyright in that accessory. Accessory is defined to include things like labels, logos, packaging, written or recorded instructions, and warranties. The purpose of these provisions is to avoid cases like R.A. and A. Bailey and Boccaccio, where sections 37 and 38 were used to prevent the importation and sale of Bailey's liqueur based on copyright in the label as an artistic work. These provisions also operate to prevent people claiming that a computer game, for example, cannot be imported under Section 44E on the basis of copyright in the associated sound recording.